And then the last fact is this. The living Jesus wants to open up your spiritual eyes. I don't know about you, but do you remember? Is there anybody here who can go back in your mind and remember? Those of you who are believers, remember when your eyes were open? Man, I do. I can remember that. He wants to open your spiritual eyes. And I love what happened next. Jesus is invited in, okay? And Luke 24, verse 30 says this. It says, now it came to pass as he sat at the table with them that he took bread, blessed it, and broke it, and gave it to them. Now, this is an interesting verse, right? Now, I want you to think this through. Wasn't Jesus the guest in Cleopas' house? What is he doing taking the bread and breaking it and blessing it? I mean, shouldn't it have been Cleopas that said, Here, Jesus, I got some bread for you. No, 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 no. Jesus, the guest, becomes the host. You see, when Jesus comes into your life, he's not just coming in to be your friend. How many want me to go ahead and preach this morning since it's Easter, all right? Jesus doesn't just come in to be your friend. Now, I've got really good news. He is your friend. He's a friend that sticks closer than a brother. Let me tell you something. When every one of, uh, else of your friends fails you, walks away, unfriends you on Facebook, stops Twittering or whatever, when, when they all let you go, let me tell you something. That's when Jesus will be right there. He will never leave you or forsake you. Come on. Is there anybody here that's found Jesus to be a good friend? Have you ever called out to him in the middle of the night and found that he wasn't there? Have you ever turned to him in a moment of crisis? And you cried out, and all of a sudden he goes, you just sensed his presence. You knew that he was right there. Come on. Jesus is a great friend. But let me tell you something else he is. He's king and he's Lord. Amen. He doesn't just come into your life as Savior. He walks into your life as the Lord. Lord means one that is honored. Amen. And, and it's, there's a lot of commentary about this. I mean, obviously Jesus takes on the role of leadership here. But, but as, I, as I was reading about this, you know, what was it that caused their eyes to be open in the act of Jesus taking up a piece of bread, br th thanking it, and, and breaking it? I mean, what, what was it? Some people think that, you know, these, these two disciples, Cleopas and his friend or his wife, whoever it was, they, they think maybe they were so closely related to some of the disciples that were at the Last Supper that, the, that they had told them Jesus did this at the Last Supper. And, you know, Jesus took bread and he broke it and they told him all about it. And so they were, when, when, when he, that it reminded them of what they had just heard from the other disciples. Or maybe it was that, that, that some of these, that Cleopas and his friend were there when, when uh, Jesus had fed the multitudes. You know that Jesus did the very same thing? He took the bread from the little boy's fish, the fish and bread. And the scripture says that he, he Gave thanks for it, and he break it. And of course, that time it multiplied. Amen. He fed 5,000 with just a few loaves and fishes. He fed 4,000 in the same way. And so maybe, maybe as they began to think about that, maybe it was that. Okay? Uh, or, or, you know, maybe they had been one of the 70 and had spent time in his presence. Uh, you know, we don't really know. Uh, uh, some people believe that as Jesus took up the bread, that his, that his sleeves fell down. You know, he, Back in those days, they wore longer sleeves, you know, and, and as you're walking along the road, you can't see the nail scars. You can't see the nail scars, right? How many of you know that, that Jesus has nail prints? We know that because Thomas, when Thomas said, Thomas said, I'm not going to believe it unless I see it. And so eight days from the moment we're talking about here in Scripture, Eight days after Jesus was resurrected, he appeared a second time to the disciples, and Thomas was right there, and Jesus said, hey, check this out, man, I'm the one. See, look at that, look right here, in my, this is where they pierced me, right here in my side. Hey, hey, he still has those scars today. I don't know about you, but when I get to see Jesus, I'm going to thank him for those scars, amen? How many of you say I'm going to thank him? Hey, we're going to see him face to face one day. Amen. But, but some think that as, as Jesus lifted up the bread to break it, that the sleeves fell down and all of a sudden they realized, well, he's Jesus. This is the one that had died. Amen. And, uh, and the scripture tells us this in Luke chapter 24 and verse 30. It says, then their eyes were opened and they knew him. 
And then the craziest thing happened. Poof, he vanished from their sight. Oh, all of a sudden he was gone. He had other things to do. Wow, so what was it? Was it, the, was it the scars? Was it the breaking of the bread? Was it the, we don't really know, but what we do know is that their eyes were open. And the Bible tells us this. The Bible tells us that the enemy of our souls, Satan, has blinded the minds of those who don't believe the gospel. 2 Corinthians 4 and verse 4 tells us this. Whose minds the God of this age has blinded who do not believe, lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine upon them. I'm just here today to tell you that on this Easter Sunday, there's a great battle raging for your soul. Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, is standing. He's knocking on the door. The Holy Spirit is wooing. He's drawing you into the person of Jesus. He's convicting you of sin. He's saying, listen, this is the truth. All the time the enemy's trying to keep the blinders on. Let me tell you something. It's time that we say, God, take the blinders off. I want to see Jesus for who He is. I want to know Him for who He is. Amen. If you don't know Jesus today, amen. That's my prayer for you, that every bit of blindness in your mind would come off. And you see, once, once, the resur- once the, 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 their eyes were open and Jesus disappeared, man, everything changed. <laughs> At that moment, everything changed because if Jesus is alive, there's no time to waste. Amen? If Jesus is alive, then everything they had believed was going to be true. If Jesus is alive, then that means death has been defeated. If Jesus is alive, then heaven is more than just a dream. If Jesus is alive, then our sins really are forgiven. If Jesus is alive, then all of His promises are true. If Jesus is alive, then we never have to be alone ever again. Come on. Amen. And this leaves me with one lasting, lingering thought today. How interesting that an explanation of the Scriptures did not do the same thing as a revelation from Jesus Christ. Am I right? They had the explanation. I'm not, I'm not saying that explanations aren't powerful. Come on. I believe the Word. Amen. We need to read the Word, trust it, and know it, and understand it. But let me tell you something. Until you invite Him in, until He reveals Himself to you, amen, let me tell you something. That's the glorious moment when you know that you know that you know. I remember the day. I was five years old. Huh. Cute little Bobby. That's what they called me back then. Some of y'all might know what butch wax was. I had some butch wax in my hair. I had to make it stand straight up in the front. It was about the little Bobby. I was in a tent meeting. Sawdust on the floor. I don't remember what they sang. I don't remember what they preached. I don't remember any of that. All I can remember is the feeling down inside of my heart that I needed something. I needed Jesus. I needed to ask Jesus into my life. And I came up to the front and knelt down and my dad came over and he prayed with me and I invited Christ into my life. Amen. And let me tell you something. He opened up the door. Now I wish I could tell you, oh, I was true to him all those days after that. uh, When I was about 15, I was moving from Hearst, Texas to Worthington, Minnesota. That last time at First Assembly of God, I got down on the front row of that church and I invited him back into my life. Amen. Why? Because I knew I was a sinner that needed Jesus. Amen. I'm just here today to tell you that when you invite him in, he'll be willing to come. He's a wonderful God and a wonderful Lord and Savior. Let me tell you, and I have experienced him in so many different ways. I've seen him to be my provider. I've had moments when, can I just tell you what happened recently? My I had a shower in my house that's going bad, and i got to have it repaired. And, and uh, so I said, Lord, okay, I need $4,000. You're going to have to provide this, Lord. Amen. All of a sudden, I get $259 deposited to my account I wasn't expecting. Then yesterday, my wife don't even know this, but I got a check in the mail reimbursed from the, reimbursed from the electric company, $169. Amen, I filled out my taxes, and I have had to pay in every year. This year, for some reason, I get, oh, I get some money back. Hello. I'm just here today to tell you that God is faithful. He's able. What a great God we serve. Amen, I can tell you in moments when I've been, needed physical healing in my body, amen, that I've cried out to the Lord and He has been there and He has helped me. 
I've seen him heal my son Derek of stuttering in one single night, stuttering at the beginning of every single sentence. I'll never forget that day. I knelt and I said, Lord, I surrendered to him. I said, Lord, if you want Derek to stutter for the rest of his life, if that's going to make a difference in his personality, okay, I accept that. But Lord, I believe you can heal. The next day I got up and Derek has never stuttered a day since. I'm just here today to tell you Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's the healer. He's real. He's powerful. He can do those things. But you see, the enemy wants to put the blinders on people's lives, get you focused on everything else, get you focused on this, get you focused on that, get you out here doing this, that, and the other. Why? Because there's a battle for your soul. Would you stand with me today?